This is not an objective documentary showing two sides of the story. This is the side of the story that gets little national publicity or outcry. So this is our lament, our outcry, our tears for disabled people dying because of the DWP. We count the broken hearts. We count the stopped hearts. I'm here today because what the DWP and the government are doing to disabled people is absolutely horrific and breaks pretty much like every human rights uh, convention going. So I'm here to protest what has been a very quiet slaughter of disabled people. There have been so many deaths within the first six to 12 months of people being uh, deemed fit to work, capable to return to work, if there was ever work for people. And most of it is an utter nonsense. It's cost them over three billion in administration so far. And that's been an utter waste of the public coffers. I'm here today because there is a saying that says all that's needed for evil to triumph is for good people to do nothing. And I refuse to sit back and do nothing. Too many good people are being hurt by the policies that this government has introduced. I invited the DW workers to sign off the next stopped hard publicly. They couldn't even look me in the eye. Sign off the next DWP deaths? Is it your signature that signs people's lives away? This building behind us has contributed to the suicides of more than 600 people. Stephen Carr was one of the first public cases. He took his own life after a work capability assessment judged him fit to work, even though he was severely ill with depression and anxiety. The coroner at his inquest would later rule that his death was linked to the flaws in the work capability assessment system. Over 10,000 people, after they were deemed fit for work, have died um, in the months after they were deemed fit for work. So we're, we're more, I have to say my heart is broken because of these people who have died. These are, this shouldn't be happening in this country. People like Mark Wood who have start, starved to death. Mark was autistic, had severe mental health difficulties and had multiple chemical sensitivities. He became estranged from his family as an adult. He cared deeply about ecology and creativity, and that combination brought some beautiful work into the world. He was so vulnerable, he was unable to do anything about his dire situation. He slowly starved to death. We want them to stop these assessments. We want them to stop making the process so demeaning, so devastating, so humiliating that people have to, you know, feel like they, can, they can't carry on. I just want all the suffering to stop. No more deaths and no more benefit cuts. A very brave woman here, Joy Dove, who's holding her daughter Jodie Whiting's heart. I'm Joy Dove. I'm the mother of Jodie Whiting who took her own life on the 21st of February 2017 through the failings of the DWP. She'd been in hospital and she had pneumonia and she had a cyst on the brain. They found a pyramidal cyst at that time because she was complaining about pain and everything. So they were sending her to like get x-rays and scans and then from North Tees Hospital to James Cook Hospital they were sending them over to have a look at this Professor Keane Anyway, Jodie needed to come out of hospital and they would decide what to do because it was a pyramidal cyst and it was nine centimetres. So she came home and she was on so 23 tablets a day. There was eight different types and two lots of morphine in them. And we thought, right, she needs to recuperate. So we came across a letter and it said, why didn't you attend a medical on the 16th of January? So I said, oh, Jodie. He said it could affect your money. So Jody says, what am I going to do? I said, don't worry, we'll send all the information. They'll probably just send you for another medical. She said, all right. So we wrote off and sent it. And then instead of a letter coming saying, yes, he's another medical, they said, you're fit to work. We couldn't believe it. I looked at her and I thought, what do you mean? How can I say you're fit to work without seeing the face? So then 
it said that you could write one more time to a second decision maker. So we done that again. But it took six weeks and Jody were like worrying. But bear in mind before this, she'd gone for the PIP changeover from DLA and it stopped her mobility. So she'd lost that monthly money as well. So she only had the ESA and now we're talking about it could affect your money. So we thought, right, second decision maker would say, OK, that's, you know, fine, give her another medical or a money back. And then letters started coming saying that your housing benefit had been ceased for the moment, your council tax and everything. She said, Mum, what are going to do? And this, I said, don't worry. She said, I can't walk out the door. I can't go sign on. They were telling her, go sign on. I mean, opening that door, that key wouldn't let me open it. Then the concierge stood it. And then I went in, concierge put the light on, she was there, uh, dead, on the city. And I started screaming. <laughs> I was dead. So the doors did. Such a shock. The concierge ran out. Getting the police ambulance, whatever. And then she left us all a note saying she couldn't go on no more. And for me to look after the kids. So I was just in, like, autopilot. I just went through it all. And I had to go everything to that. And then at the the police said, well, I knew the be in quest. So they said I'd have to write, like, a statement to see our, you know, final days were, what frame of mind. So I wrote it and I knew it was the DWP's fault for what they'd done. I started a campaign. I thought, this is not right. And then I got them investigated by the independent case examiner and they found five palings. And it's an independent inquiry to investigate DWP failings in relation to these deaths, including whether they have been misconduct by civil servants or ministers, any evidence of misconduct contributing to serious harm or death to be turned to the police. It's for everything, you know, and everybody, not just for my daughter. Young and old, it's for everybody. Mm -hmm. So my daughter's, like, spearhead the campaign, and that makes me feel like a death wasn't in bed. And while Joy fights on for justice for Jody, it has been 10 years since the death of Stephen Carr, and still people are dying. People like 21-year-old Kerr Featherstone, who took his own life after his benefits were reduced, even though he was so ill he couldn't even see his own family. In response to Kerr's death, the same old platitudes are wheeled out by the DWP. They said we support millions of people a year and our priority is they get the benefits to which they are entitled promptly and receive a supportive and compassionate service. In the vast majority of cases this happens, but when sadly there is a tragic case, we take it very seriously, learn lessons and make change to our systems when necessary. There has been over 10 years of independent reviews, peer reviews, United Nations condemnation, coroner stating that benefit reforms have led to people's deaths, freedom of information requests exposing DWP lies, research on the damage the DWP is doing, judges' decisions pointing to the unfairness of the benefit system, documentaries showing deceitful tactics from the DWP, and there is still no political or legal recourse. There's only one thing for it. I have to section the DWP. Section 136 is a legal power and a mental health term where someone is removed from a public place for being a danger to themselves or other people. There is no loss in this building. Come on! Don't take this lot! Come on, take it! What are you scared of?
you have blood on your hands, DWP. How can you make somebody fit for work when they're lying in a coffin? We are sick of you. And as doctors, we have come to assess you as you have assessed many people to their death, to their starvation. So DWP and the workers inside, are you dressed appropriately to condemn people to their death? Do you use a computer to destroy people's lives? I therefore section you to be unfit. You are a danger to yourself and other people. Because of all these changes, thousands of us have died. And if these changes keep on happening, what more proof do we need that you have lied? Which side are you on, my boys? Or which side are you on? Or which side are you on, my boys? Or which side are you on? Justice for Jody and thousands more. Thousands. Justice for Jody, yes. The DWP didn't appreciate being sectioned. They called the police. We told the officer we just thought it was wrong people starved to death or were bullied into suicide. Eventually they let us go. I suppose this morning I've been thinking quite a lot about the difference in reaction between um, the way people are and the government um, have expressed such concern, rightly, about the, the terrible toll that the coronavirus has taken. But I'm thinking over the years what's been happening with people who have disabilities and have been found fit to work by this government and have been dying in the thousands and there's been absolutely no outrage about that apart from a few selected groups, individuals and so on. Um, I don't know whether it's people haven't known about this but this has happened and I think we need to be aware that this kind of thing continues to happen. The system is exactly the same. Disabled people are being found fit to work and then dying soon after. And that's just not, that's not acceptable. When you look back on your own life, what would your heart look like? Would it be silent and mediocre or full of kindness and courage? Who's paying the rent to your heart? Monsters of power or your own decency? Does any of this make you mad enough to act?